leadership okay. is influence, nothing more, nothing less. Now, I agree with that. And, and let me give you my definition of influence. The definition of influence is, is, is simply the ability to move a person or persons to a desired action, usually within the context of a specific goal. Now, that's the definition, but I don't believe that that's the essence okay. of leadership. Okay. The essence of influence is pull pull as opposed to push okay. as in the old question how far can you push which right. is why great influencers great leaders they don't push they don't push themselves on others they don't push their ideas on others they don't push their will on others they're mm. not push eat push is sort of like depending upon compliance that's positional leadership you know you're the boss and you can tell them what to do that's compliance that's push when people are pushed okay they may do what they're told to, because they don't want to be fired or punished or you know what have you but they're not going to bring their best self to the table pull is earning commitment okay so how do you do that well you know how does a leader influence through pull rather than push well the great leader the great influencer they ask themselves questions to make sure they're focused in the right direction see i believe we need to be internally motivated but okay. outwardly focused welcome to the nicholas brown podcast a podcast talk show about real estate investing business leadership and personal development each week we explore current real life case studies about how to build financial independence through investing in real estate to build your personal portfolio through passive income models along with interviews from the top business leaders and personal development leaders now, here's your host, Nicholas Brown. Welcome to the show, everyone. I got a great episode. If I have to, I, I, I told this guest I'll, I'll break it down to the series, so I have to. <laughs> the series. So make sure you guys subscribe on YouTube subscribe on whatever podcast channel you have make sure you, this is a treat i promise you and we'll love he's honored to come back but you ever had, heard this want to do it different i'm gonna do the about section i'm gonna tell a story how i came across this because me personally i believe in building bridges i believe you're gonna get your blessing regardless so give and, and you will get keep giving don't worry about it your blessing is gonna come because that's the title and we have the author one of the authors and the co-authors i'm just gonna jump the gun the go giver, the go give away, correct? Go give away. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tell a story. I'm gonna give a shout outs. I believe in building bridge, and you know I acknowledge those. How did I get to this? So I deal with real estate investing. What I do with real estate investing this last year, by the way, sign on the LinkedIn. This is another way to tie in like minded, just such as this person, this person that built the bridge with me, Hendra Tambunan. Went to his YouTube, saw him on YouTube, reached out to Hendra on LinkedIn, did an interview with him about, matter of fact, half a year back. And here we are again, where I believe in law of magnetism and attraction. It's just something. When I reached out to this author and this person here, he's a, he's a true being. Man. And he's, a, he's a realist. He doesn't he does high up, doesn't high down. He's just balanced. He, he and he's one of the leadership steps of gen, the general. He'll be available for the people if he, he can. He's that type of person. He's that type of leader. So, shout out to Hendra. And like I said, if I have to make this two series, that's no problem. <laughs> but I have to give my knowledge to this this person here, and I love telling the story. So you guys never quit on what you're doing. Keep drilling. Keep getting out there, and it'll happen. So I'm gonna do the about section, and then we're gonna get we're gonna begin. So. For over 30 years, Bob Berg has been successfully showing entrepreneurs, leaders, and sales professionals how to communicate their value and accelerate their referral business. Although for years, he was best known for his sales classic, Endless Referrals, is his business parable, The Go-Giver, co-authored with John David Mann that has created a worldwide movement. While part of a four-book series, The Go-Giver itself has sold more than one million copies and been translated into 30 languages, ladies and gentlemen, it was rated 
number 10 in Inc. Magazine's list of the most motivational books ever written. Let me repeat that. This magazine <laughs> was rated number 10 in Inc. Magazine, if you guys know about that. Inc. Magazine's list of the most motivational books ever written and was Hotspot's 20 most highly rated sales books of all time. Bob is an advocate, supporter, and defender of the free enterprise system, believing that the amount of money one makes is directly proportional to how many people they serve. He is also an unapologetic animal fanatic and served on the board of directors for Fury Friends Adoption and Clinic in this town of Jupiter, Florida. For more information, go to thegogiver.com. That's spelled T-H-E-G-O-G-I-V-R.com. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, sir. What a joy. What a nice introduction. What a pleasure to be with you. And, you know, you had mentioned about the, the word value. You are absolutely a person whose value, whose value centered, values based. I just, you know, just getting to know you on social media has been a Thank joy. You. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to know you too. And you proved that book, ladies and gentlemen, grab that book. I'm, I'm telling you, it makes sense. It, it, the story, you just gravitate. But what I'm going to do you go by Mr. Berg or Bob. What's comfortable for you, sir? Uh, I'm, Bob, I'm old school. I'm old school. I have to ask. Uh, so I'm and, I, and I appreciate that. <laughs> no, Bob, Bob is absolutely fine. Thank okay, you. Okay, great, great. Bob, I'm going to go through a few questions on here. I'm just going to jump to the top about our, our show. My jo show deal with three things. And it's going to tie to you because you're a leadership and you do, you do public speaking also, right? You spoke mm -hmm. worldwide. So we talk about motivation, teaching, and perspective on leadership and personal development. So anyone, it, has, it doesn't have to deal with business, just deal with a person's life. Would you agree, sir? Especially for their book. Absolutely, sure. Okay, so this is gonna tie in, ladies and gentlemen. That's why if you listen to the podcast, I want you to see this works for if, if you have a business or if you work with someone or if you lead, it doesn't matter. This book is for everyone, I promise you. So I'm gonna ask a few questions and um, I just wanna start out, it's gonna lead to this. What got you? What what started you? Was you always a business owner, or we just go back a little bit? We want to find out about Mr. Bob. <laughs> well, I, I began in broadcasting first in radio, doing ah, sports, okay. and then I was a news guy for a couple of years. I on, on television on a on a very very small uh, ABC affiliate. Uh, I wasn't really very good at it, and I, I like to say I graduated into sales. And because yeah. uh, there was really nothing else I thought I could, you know, do. And, and I found sales was certainly not very easy because I had no sales experience, no formal sales training. And, and the company where I was working, that's not something that they, they provided. And so I was sort of out there on my own <laughs> and uh, didn't do very well for a while. And then I was in a, a bookstore. Now, this is about 40 years ago. So back then, okay. sales books weren't everywhere. You know, you see them all sure. the time now. Right. It's not, but right. back then, it was different. And I was looking for something. I didn't exactly know what. And I saw two books. Uh, one was by um, Zig Ziglar, and the other was by Tom Hopkins, two of the really iconic sales yes. people, sales trainers, right? Right. And uh, so I got those books, and it, it just opened up a whole new world for me. First, I had no idea. Idea. there was a how-to aspect of selling i didn't okay. know i mean okay. can you imagine that I, but i had no idea right and so that inspired me right there so i got into those books and i always say i didn't read them i devoured them okay. and so i would come okay. home every night after work and i would just go through them and i would note take i would highlight i would underline i would tear you know the turn on the, the pages mark the pages i mean it was just and i studied and i learned and interesting, within about three weeks, my sales began to really, really improve. Okay. The reason my feeling is, because I certainly wasn't a, 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 you know, a different person three weeks earlier than I was three weeks later, it's that I was now working with a, a methodology, a okay. system. That's right. right. I, you know, I personally define, and I'm always defining terms. So, you sure. know, I, I define a system as the process of predictably achieving a goal based right. on a logical and specific set of how-to principles, the key being predictability. If it's been proven that by doing A, you, you can get B, then you know that all you need to do is A and continue to do A, and eventually you'll get the desired result of B. And that's, that's what I did. 
But here was the, the really great thing. And I know you'll appreciate this. It's that I started realizing that sales wasn't just about understanding the how-to aspect, although that, of course, is very important, but it's the personal development aspect. That's right. It's building right. yourself on the inside. And then that, that, that success on the inside that you're building, you're taking in through books, through, well, back then it was tapes, right? right. Uh, you know, uh, going to <laughs> seminars, doing all those things, right? Then the, the, the success manifests itself outwardly, but it begins in here. So I had started collecting all the books I could, the, you know, all the sales and motivational and personal development and, and right. classics and, and studying them. And that's really what it was a, about. And eventually I became sales manager of a, another company and uh, started, uh, started after that being asked to share with other companies and other individuals what worked for me. And I eventually found out, wow, you can actually make a living doing that. You know, you can be a speaking professional and uh learn i joined the national speakers association learned how to how to have a speaking business not just the speaking part but the business aspect of it oh okay. and, you know i've been doing that now for you know about 30 years now did you when you, when you started you said you, you, sports and radio right <laughs> what type of field what type of position was the sales that you went to and I'm so gonna leave I, this puppet, ladies and gentlemen, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, so I started actually selling uh, advertising on for radio and TV. The company I had worked for uh, had a spot open in in their advertising department. Okay, and uh, and they actually had a TV station and a radio station. Um, that's not the radio station where I had worked before, uh, but, sure. but this this particular ABC affiliate also had a, a radio uh, station too. So I started selling advertising for both their, okay. their radio and TV. Okay, so you had to adjust because you had to be a people person. I'm think because I used to do door to door, and you can just imagine you just walk into the business, hey, we're not interested, you know. Yeah. You have a mindset at that sure. time to keep going. So how do you how did you adjust? Cause you're, cause what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, in the book, it's about giving value. You have to give some of my value, but sound sure. like in time he had to research and study where you headed, right? Or what you well, what sure, doing. yeah, and it, like anything else, I mean, you've got to be able to reach out and to be able to to find out who is interested. You know, in, in knowing about how you can help them through your product or service. And, and I think that's the big thing. Sure. I think it's understanding that selling is, you know, some people think, well, selling is trying to convince someone to buy something they don't want or need. Well, that's not selling. That's called being a con artist. Okay? Right. Okay. Selling. Okay. I define selling as simply discovering what the other person does want, does need, does desire, okay. and helping them to get it. Gotcha. But there's still work that goes into finding out if that person is a prospective customer or not. They may not be. So you've got to be able to, to knock on enough doors or make enough calls or, you know, what have you right. to be able to do that. Now, when you, uh, as an entrepreneur, you'll often, you'll determine your niche before you go out after it. So you're going to have a good idea if this niche is one that, do they need what you offer? Do they want what you offer? Because if they need it, but don't want it, well, that might not be too successful too. And can they afford what you offer? And so, but if you know they need it, they want it, can afford it. Um, uh, and it's a market that you believe you would enjoy serving. Okay. Now you've got a good market to, to go to. And that doesn't mean everybody in that, that niche is going to be interested. They're not. Right. Right. But at least, you know, that is a niche itself that some of the people will be, but you've got to be willing to go out and make the calls and get no's, you know, along but the way. But you had the mindset, because you're, you're positive. That's what my point is. You're positive and you, you sound like you, well, I know you did. I'm just saying, overall, you had a vision. And if it doesn't happen, you still moved on to the next. And that's part of the book also. You, 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 am I right? You was, but I didn't always so, have that, though. That, that, that's that's what, something I had to develop. But were you passionate about your position? It's not like you yeah, passionate. Oh, you're I passionate loved what I was person. doing. Oh, you know, I loved what I was doing. It wasn't forced on you, right? Right. No, I loved what I was doing. I loved <laughs> right. the opportunity. But right. I wasn't necessarily back, you know, at that age when I was doing it. Okay. You know, I'm not the, the uh, you know, positive person that I necessarily am right now. I went through a real okay. big, you know, metamorphosis uh, in my 30s because okay. I realized that, you know, while by the time I had reached my 
you know, mid thirties, I had had a, a certain modicum of success. I also knew there were a lot of things about me, a lot of character flaws that were keeping me from being as successful and happy, you know, and when you think about it, that is what it's about. You know, if you, right. you want to have a happy, fulfilled life, one of, right. you know, uh, <laughs> and, but there were a, a lot of aspects of me that uh, I didn't feel that was, that was going to happen based on how I was. And so I really went through some changes and, um, and, became and really turned myself into a person who was a lot more positive, who was a lot more grateful for things, That's right? awesome. who, who spoke better of people than I had previously. Um, so, you know, my sales when I was younger and, you know, again, I, I was very fortunate. I learned sales, did well in it. I, I was developing myself to a point I could attain some success, but certainly I had to make some significant changes in myself. Okay. before I could take that to the next level. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, that's another episode. <laughs> yeah, <but that's, laughs> I can see it. That's how we could go deeper, but we're not. This is temporary. Let's stay focused. It's on okay. a leadership. So <laughs> what, what, tell us about the book and then it's going to lead to, I'm going to ask that question, the next question. Like what, what overall the book, just a short version of the, of yeah, the book. Yeah, sure. So the book itself is my apologies. The sure, book no itself is a um, parable. So it's a business fable. Uh, and it was co-authored by John David Mann, who's a wonderful, wonderful writer. I, I'm we much think more him. A, we think yeah, him too. Shout yeah, out. I yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm much more of a how-to guy. I'm step one, Me step too. two, step three. Yeah. I'm actually fairly boring. John is a magnificent writer. Okay. And so we collaborated on this and it's a, so it's a, a, a a business parable about a, a young guy by the name of Joe. Uh, he's a good guy, but you know, and he's ambitious and he's aggressive and he's out there and he's like, but his, his, his focus is really, it's too much on himself okay. and not on wow. others. And what mm. that's really doing is that stifling his growth and his effectiveness. And he meets a, a mentor, a main mentor by the name of Pindar, who then introduces him to some others. Here's what Joe realizes. And here is, the basic premise of, of everything go-giver. And that is okay. when you shifting your focus, this is really, you know, where it begins, shifting your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others. Understanding that doing so is not only uh, a more fulfilling way of conducting business, it's the most financially profitable way as well that's awesome that's awesome so that leads to this question what is leadership to you well i remember uh dr john maxwell one of the you know iconic leadership authorities yes. of our time saying that that you know he defined leadership as influence <laughs> he said leadership okay. is influence nothing more nothing less now i agree with that and, and let me give you my definition of influence okay Okay. And then the definition, but then I want to go a little deeper if that's okay. Please. Okay. So I believe that the definite, well, the definition of influence is, is, is simply the ability to move a person or persons to a desired action, usually within the context of a specific goal. Okay. okay. That's, that's by definition, influence, leadership, influence, right? Now that's the definition, but I don't believe that that's the essence Okay. of leadership or the essence of influence. Okay. The essence of influence is pull, pull as opposed to push. Okay. As in the old question, how far can you push a rope? And we know the answer is not very far, well, at least not very fast or very effectively, right? Which right. is why great influencers, great leaders, they don't push. They don't push themselves on others. They don't push their ideas on others. They don't push their will on others. They're not mm. push eat. Right. You never hear people say, wow, uh, that David or, or that uh, Mary, she is so influential. She has a lot of <laughs> push with right, people, right? right. No, she's right. influential. She's a great leader. She has a lot of pull. pull right, people. magnetize. It, ah, it's an attraction, right? right. That's right. Magnetize That's right. People right. That's what attracts me to you, right. sir. <laughs> and so, you know, that push is sort of like depending upon compliance. That's positional leadership you know you're the boss 
and you can tell them what to do. That's compliance. That's push. Now, does that ever work? Well, for the short term, you might get something done. But, you know, it's very difficult because whether you're talking about a team of thousands or a hundred or a committee of three or whatever it happens to be, when people are pushed, okay, mm-hmm. they may do what they're told to, because they don't want to be fired or punished or, you know, what have you, but they're not going to bring their best self to the table. Right. And they may right. even sabotage right. the process, you know, right. when it comes to that's push. Pull is earning commitment. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, you know, how does a leader influence through pull rather than push? Well, the great leader, the great influencer, they ask themselves questions to make sure they're focused in the right direction. See, I believe we need to be internally motivated, but outwardly focused. So the great influencer, what John David Mann and I would call the genuine influencer, uh, they ask themselves questions such as how does what I'm asking this person to do, how does it align with their goals, right? How does it, how does it align with what they need, what they want, what they desire? How does what, what I want this other person to do, how does it align with their values? How does it help them solve a problem or a challenge? How does it help bring them closer to happiness, right? Win-win. Win-win. Exactly. And when we ask ourselves these questions thoughtfully, intelligently, genuinely, authentically, right? Not as a way to uh, manipulate another human being into doing our will, but as a way of building everyone, like you said, win-win, building everyone in the process. Now we've come a lot closer to earning that person's commitment. Okay. Now, Dondi Scumachi, one of my great friends, wonderful leader, she has a saying, when it comes to leadership, when it comes to influence, she says, compliance will never take you where commitment can go. Mm. And I think that's just Mm. such a beautiful, you know, summation, really. Can you repeat that? Compliance will. Yeah. Yeah. Compliance will never take you where commitment can go. So as leaders, our job is to help people buy into our vision, if you will, right? Because the leader begins with that that vision and we help them buy into it through helping them identify where they relate to that vision, right? How they fit in with that vision, how that vision benefits them as well. Wow. (laughs) So that leads to this. At least the next question, how has, so you've been doing it over 40 years, which you've been a leader, but you've been in the sales field or whatever. How has leadership changed to you? What's your perspective on leadership? Because the reason why I say that, if you look, if ladies and gentlemen, if you look at my previous podcast, I, I listen to leaders such as he, everyone has a different technique. And this time around, I, you got the key word culture. It's not like the old days where, as he said before, it's kind of like pushy. You got pushy salesman. Right. I'm not a pushy salesman. I love educating, you know, and people do business. They like, know, and trust. So what is your, what is your perspective now on leadership at that time? Is it the same or has it changed? Well, when I was first starting out, I, I wasn't a very good leader. You know, I was a good salesperson. But when I first got moved to sales manager, Okay. Uh, which is sales leadership, right? Right, um, right? I wasn't a good leader. I had no idea. Just like I, when I got into sales, I had no idea how to sell, right? Well, when I got put into leadership because I was a good productive salesperson, I got put into leadership. I didn't know anything about leadership. I was a horrible leader. Okay. I, I was a good producer, but I wasn't a good leader. And it's two different things. Okay. And so I had to learn. And I didn't even realize I was a bad leader. <laughs> right. I didn't know, didn't know what I didn't know. And so it was, it was me, me, I, me. It was me, it, me, me. Yeah. Well, it was really. <laughs> and right. when I, yeah, when I began to realize that I was really a kind of a yucky leader, sure. you know, right. Uh, well, what do you do when you realize something? Just like when I realized I had no idea how to sell, you find out how to do it. How did I do my way was always find some books. <laughs> right. right. Right, right. And so I started reading and I started listening and I start, right. And so, uh, you know, you learn as you, as you go along and you, you know, you look at people and then you think back to people you've worked for and who've led you. And there are all kinds of examples. And I remember Jim Rohn, you know, there's a, a saying yes. from the sages that, that, you know, who is a wise person? And the answer is that person who learns from all others. 
Mm. And I always loved that saying. I think mm-hmm. Jim Rohn had a great Love take that. on that saying, though. If you remember Jim Rohn, he was one yes, of the great ones. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Brilliant. And, and yeah. And Jim used to say, you know, yeah, you can learn from everyone. From some people, you learn what to do. And from other people, you learn right. what not to do. <laughs> right. Exactly. And I, I thought of leaders that I'd, I'd worked for, and some were really good. And some were really horrible. Sure. You know? And so you kind of also take that into consideration and you say, what are the things they did that I admired that made me feel included, that made me feel comfortable, that made me feel mm. like I wanted to follow them into battle. That's right. 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 Exactly. Um, and right. then what did the leaders do who kind of made me feel awful and, and mm. you know, and, and just it was a horrible situation, horrible culture and, and so forth. Well, don't, you know, don't do those, <laughs> you know, don't do that right. stuff. Right. Right. So there, there, we can learn from, you know, from our personal experiences, from those we, we, we've experienced. And of course, you know, there's always, you know, books and, and uh, audios and videos and all the learning that we can do and, you know, and, and so forth. So to me, it's a fun journey. Okay. Well, Hey, Hey, Bob, I know we could go further, but I'm not going to go further because we get deep. In I could talk to you all day. I, I can yeah. too, man, because you're wisdom, man, and you're a real person. And I have, I'm pretty sure the audience, here's the key, ladies and gentlemen, send us a review. Make sure you're on YouTube, podcast, or my LinkedIn. Reach out to Bob, reach out to me, send us questions, because I want another series. If you don't mind, I'd love to have you on, on I'd again. Love that. So, what you got, what do you have going on? What do you got going on? Give them a plug. Or, or what, what Probably would you like our most fun thing. And, and people can find out most everything at Berg, B-U-R-G dot com. And I think you also mentioned you were kind enough to mention the gogiver.com earlier. Sure. Uh, we also have a um, go-giver community. And really? yeah, and okay. uh, it's just at the go-giver community dot com. And uh, it's for people who want, I always say, Think of Facebook and then, well, it's nothing like Facebook. Uh, you know, right, it's where, right. where a whole group of people kind of get together and they give value to others. And they also are able wow. to receive value from others. And it's a community of people who want to make a difference, who want to kind of create the world that, that we all want to co-create together. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a lot of fun. So, you know, we do what we call go giver networking and there's a lot mm. of a uh, lot of strategizing and a lot of, of uh, it just it, it's it's really fun. Right? So we, we invite anybody to check out the community and if they'd like to join up, then uh, they can do. There's a couple options there for them to do. That was going to be the question. Can he was it for businesses or for people that want to learn how to network with like minded or what, what yeah type of- I mean it, it's it's for both and there okay. and there are a couple of different membership there's the the go giver community the ambassador level which is eleven dollars a month we wanted to make it affordable for everyone to be able hold to- up hold up ladies and gentlemen stop the press he say eleven dollars yeah eleven dollars a month really and it's guaranteed we always say do it for a month if you <laughs> right. don't like it you can stop you'll get your money back and then wow. we have a um, then we have also a Go Giver Success Alliance part of that, and that's gotcha. a little more expensive. That's ninety seven sure. a month, and that also includes a group meeting where we where we do some really deep intensive strategizing. Um, but I would you know I just say to people start out with the eleven. You can always right. if you want you can always move up to the uh, Go Giver Success Alliance. Oh, that's very affordable, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's less than a meal. Pretty much, it yeah. is less than a meal these days. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> well, hey, Bob, I definitely appreciate. It. We're honored to have you, man. Feel free to come back to this show anytime. And anything you need from me, as you know, just reach out to me. Thank you. I'm all. And I, and once again, awesome. shout out to Hendra, to Tam Boonin. I wouldn't have met this person here, this human uh. being, without you, because he followed your book. Kendra followed your, your advice yeah. on your book. Yeah, that Bob. was really so nice. I appreciate it. It works. It works. So thanks for coming on the show, um, Bob. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that you have it. As I always say in end it, don't condemn, don't complain, because you have a choice to make a change. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us on the Nicholas Brown Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, www.nickbrowninc.com, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. 
If you like this show and you are a new real estate investor, then check out one of Nicholas's free reports called the Wholesale Dominator Report. Also located on our website, www.nickbrownie.com slash free reports. Be sure to tune in for our next episode. And remember, don't condemn, don't complain, because you have a choice to make a change. Have a great day.